this set of videos is over the number line. So I'm going to be introducing the number line to you and telling you how it's going to affect us in our day-to-day -day operations throughout just basic math and throughout the semester. Now this should definitely be a review for you. So if you want to skip this set of videos entirely, that's perfectly understandable. Or if you want to skip to just the examples in the video, that should work too. Or if you feel like you need to review this material, now is a better time to do it than later in the semester. We want to make sure that you understand this material now so you don't miss these basic operations now and try and play catch up with it later. So the first thing that we need to go over is what the number line looks like. And of course, it is just a line that goes forever in both directions. So if you ever have to hand in a written number line, this is how I mostly expect it to look. I don't need to see all the tick marks on here with all the numbers in here, but I do need to see just a basic line with arrows in both directions because the number line does go forever in both directions. Now you notice here that this has both positive and negative numbers on there, and zero is in the middle. Zero is kind of a weird number because sometimes it's considered positive and sometimes it's considered neither negative nor positive. So it kind of just depends upon what textbook we're referencing at that time. And if there's any homework problem that we're referencing that has a specific example on it, then I'll try and clarify what the book is exactly looking for. Okay. Now notice here on this number line, it already has the whole number listed here from 1 to 10 and negative 1 to negative 10. And notice the smaller number is closer to the middle of the number line. The smaller numbers are closer to 0, and the largest numbers are um, the farther out. Now, this only includes the whole numbers, but any real number can be represented on this number line, even though we might not see it at first glance. So let's see an example of what we expect to do on your homework. And this proves that any number can be represented on the number line. So we are going to take these list of numbers down here, and we are going to represent them on the number line. Now these are color coded, and that's exactly what your online homework will expect you to do. So we're just going to work through these left to right. So the first thing is we need to represent negative 7 on the number line. Well, if we're only representing one specific number, then we do that with just basically a point or a dot. So we find negative 7 on the number line. It's color coded in red. So we're going to draw a red dot or a red circle at negative 7. Now I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can finish the rest of these here. Okay, so the next color is blue. So we're going to represent 4.4. The online homework um, is going to be difficult to do this exactly. So as long as you get somewhat close, then the homework will most likely accept it. So 4.4, it's going to be a positive number. So it's on the right here. It is past 4, but not quite 4.5. So the way I'm going to do this is 4.5 and, and then somewhat just to be the left of it. So that there is a close representation of 4.4. The next number is negative 2.8, so it's going to be on the left-hand side with the negatives. I'm going to go past negative 2, almost to negative 3, because 0.8 is close to negative 3. So there is my yellow representation of that number there. Okay. 3 and a fourth, this is a fraction. You can either convert it to decimals or, again, just trying to go with the closest representation. So 3 and a fourth is past 3 in between 3 and 4, and 1 fourth is 1 fourth of the way up. So I'm going to do 3, and if you cut this into quarters, it's 1 quarter the way up. So my green dot is going to go close to there. Next is negative 14 thirds, and this is probably the most difficult one because it's not the easiest to see right offhand. If you need to convert it to a mixed fraction or, again, come up with the decimal representation of it, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to convert it to a mixed fraction. 3 goes into 14 evenly four times because 3 times 4 gives me 12. So it goes in there evenly four times. So if I take 12 away with this, that would give me the whole number of 4, and that would leave me with two of those leftovers. 
So I have negative 4 and 2 thirds. So I go to negative 4, cut it into thirds, and I'm going to go approximately 2 thirds down. The last number is negative 1 fifth. We're going to draw that one in orange, and um, that is going to be between 0 and negative 1 because it's on the negative side of it. And if I cut it into fifths, then it is just 1 fifth away from 0 on the number line. Now the only extra thing I want to point out here is in fractions, it doesn't matter whether the negative is in front of the fraction or in the numerator of the fraction or even in the denominator of the fraction, it's all going to mean the same thing. It's going to mean the left hand side of the number line. So that's how we represent all numbers on the number line. Doesn't matter whether it's whole numbers, positive numbers, negative numbers, decimals, or fractions, it's all done in that fashion. The next thing that we need to cover, which is correlated to the number line, is inequality symbols. And there's actually four of them. We see them here. And I'm going to go ahead and try and summarize these in a table. So we can see that we have them here. Okay. The first one is less than. And an example of this is 3 is less than or smaller than 10. Now, the reason that this is in the same set of videos as the number line videos is because if it's less than, then that number is to the left of the second number on the number line. So, for example, if I were to draw my number line, and if I were to draw my numbers, I'd have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can see that 3 is to the left of 10 on the number line, so that's why 3 is less than 10. The next symbol is greater than, which is this symbol here. And for example, 12 is greater than negative 4. Greater than means to the right of. So if I draw this on the number line with 0 in the middle, I'm going to go by 4 this time. I don't always have to go by whole numbers or each individual whole number. So I'm going to go 4, 8, 12, and then negative 4 here. I can see that 12 is to the right of negative 4 on the number line. So 12 is greater than negative 4 on the number line. Now the next two are almost exactly the same as the first two, but it does have this one extra thing that goes with it, or equal to. If it's purely less than or purely greater than, then it needs to be to the left of or to the right of on the number line. If it has this bar underneath of it, or the words, or equal to, that means it doesn't have to be purely to the left of it on the number line. It means it can actually be the exact same number. So an example here, 5 is less than or equal to 5, meaning that the number, meaning that 5 is either less than or 5 is exactly the same number on the number line. So 5 is equal to 5, so this is a true statement. Same thing with the greater than here. Negative 3 is greater than or equal to negative 8. If I draw this up, I have 0, negative 1, 2, 3, and negative 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I see that negative 3 is to the right of or the same number as negative 8 on my number line. So this is a true statement here. So hopefully now I have clarified what each of these inequality symbols means. So how might you see these symbols on homework examples? Well, for now they're going to be really easy examples. So we see here all we need to do is fill in the blanks and they don't even have all four of our inequality symbols. We just have purely the greater than, the less than, or the equal to make these two examples a true statement. I suggest that you pause the video here and see if you can finish these two examples on your own. Okay, negative 10, how does that compare to negative 3 on the number line? Well, if I were to draw up the number line, negative 10 would be to the left of negative 3, meaning that negative 10 is smaller than negative 3, so the inequality symbol that I need to insert here is the less than inequality symbol. Example 2, 3.9 compared to negative 2.7. Um, negatives on the left, positives on the right. So that means my positive 3.9 is to the right of my negative 2.7. So my inequality symbol here that gets inserted is the greater than. 
Another set of examples that you might see on the homework is just stating whether the answer is true or false. Now, these are a little bit more difficult because they're fractions, but I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work these on your own. Okay, here. I said again that they're more difficult because they're fractions, but what we want to do is we want to look on these fractions as an equal playing field. Well, that means we just want to convert these fractions into least common denominator form, and we should completely understand that by now. So looking at example one, what is my least common denominator between 8 and 32? And we want to look at factors that they have in common. Well, this one should be fairly easy because 32 has a factor of 8, and it's actually 8 times 4. So all we need to do to this fraction over here is multiply it by the missing piece or the missing factor, which is 4. Again, think about the kids in the candy store. My left fraction is missing a piece of four candy, so we're going to go ahead and give him that four candy so he doesn't cause fights with the other fraction. So I'm going to take my fraction of seven over eight, and I'm going to multiply it by four over four. Multiply straight across. Seven times four gives me 28 and four times eight gives me 32. So seven eighths converts to a 28 over 32 fraction. So now I just need to see, is that greater than seven over 32, since it has the same common denominator? Well, since my denominators are the same, basically I don't even have to worry about those. I just compare the top numbers. Is 28 greater than or bigger than seven? And this is yes. So this is, in fact, a true statement. Same thing with example number two over here. Okay. So if you didn't already try this one on your own, I suggest pause the video and go from there. All right, so my common denominator, um, 45, actually has, again, a 9 in common. 9 times 5 gives me 45. So I'm going to take my left-hand fraction, and I'm going to multiply it by the missing piece, which is 5 over 5. That gives me 40 over 45, and we want to see, is that less than 4 over 45? Well, since my common denominators match, I don't have to worry about that. I just ask the numerator, is 40 less than 4? That is no, because 40 is, in fact, bigger than or greater than 4. So this is a false statement. So my answer here is false. Now, you could also do this by converting it to decimals. But again, the more you can do with fractions without utilizing your calculator, the better understanding that you have with them. And it's going to give you a better math understanding, which is going to help you succeed in this course. So this is where I'm going to stop my first video, which basically just introduced the number line and um, the inequality symbols.